Modern numerical protection relays have evolved significantly in the past decade. These protection relays are characterized by few trends like a common hardware platform, software configuration to perform many different protection functions in one device, enhanced communication capabilities, interconnectivity and information sharing which has given the end users higher reliability, increased levels of control and interoperability between different vendors' products and systems. This have been achieved through open standards and modern Ethernet technology. This technology change has given a lot of benefits but also exposed electrical substation for cybersecurity threats that have been seen in the traditional enterprise systems since years. Though the concern of cybersecurity for electrical substation is high but often it is not addressed properly. Some of the myth pertaining to cybersecurity of electrical substation are, cybersecurity is nice to have but we have invested in latest technology to restrict the access in electrical substation. However, cyber attacks are very attractive for attackers. Identifying the source of cyber attack is difficult since there is no physical act to observe and many methods available to cover tracks of cyber attacks. We are safe since we use serial legacy communication protocols in our substation. Remember, it is not the protocol that is attacked, it is the software implementation and the devices which will be targeted by cyber attacks. The older the software, the easier to attack it. Also, legacy devices were developed without cyber cybersecurity in mind. So, is it possible to infect protection relay or any communication network hardware with malware? Yes. It is possible to infect protection relay or any communication network hardware. It may be possible that protection relay or network hardware have some programming errors known as vulnerabilities in cyber world. Cyber attackers exploit one or more vulnerabilities to achieve their goal e.g. crash some service of the protection relay or network hardware denial of service dose, execute own code to infect other protection relays in the network worm virus etc. Most frequent vulnerability notice for protection relay is buffer overflow vulnerability. As a good practice, it is always advisable to use latest firmware of the protection relays since it will minimize the risk of vulnerability. Apart from protection relays and network communication hardware, there are other possible targets for electrical substation e.g. remote access setup for substation automation, control center connection, testing equipment, engineering laptops etc. Remote access, it is quite often electrical substation network has station computers enabled with remote access from organization's IT infrastructure. Access is provided either as direct access or through VPN or remote desktop software. In case of any security breach with organization's IT infrastructure, infrastructure, cyber attackers might get access to electrical substation network and install malware on station computers. To prevent such situation, it is advisable to use two-factor authentications for remote access or at least opt for secure process for file transfer to station computer. Control center connection. Control center connection are usually done with the help of communication gateways RTUs. Gateways RTUs may have multiple protocols and ports and sometimes even firewall is not enabled or not available. It is good practice to enable only needed physical interfaces and enable only the required services or protocol needed per interface. In cyber world, it is known as hardening. Also, gateways RTUs should not be the front line of communication with control center and always enable firewall for such communication. Testing equipment engineering devices, test sets with network connections and test engineering computers laptops needs to be handled carefully in the electrical substation. These devices are often connected with organizations IT infrastructure or even internet. This may pose risk of infection with malware or it may be compromised by cyber attacker for further damage to electrical substation. It is always good practice to consider dedicated computers laptops for testing engineering of protection relays and other substation automation devices. It is also good practice to harden these computer laptops physical interfaces e.g. HDMI, VGA, serial ports etc. and enable firewall to reduce the surface area for cyber attacks. If possible, opt for testing engineering devices connection over substation network which will provide secure and monitored connection with protection relays, Ethernet switches and other substation automation automation hardware provided you have deployed network management and security systems. Of course, this is not full and final strategy to prevent cyber attacks however little more attention on this topic can prevent or at least minimize the damage loss to electrical substation and power distribution grid. Cybersecurity is crucial for the energy sector, especially for electrical substations that ensure reliable and secure power delivery. These modern digital hubs rely on IEC 61850 communication networks that enable device integration, but also make them potential cyber targets. To secure substations, a novel approach blends functional security monitoring with intrusion detection systems IDS and OT expertise. Collaboration between IT and OT is critical, but their different perspectives create cybersecurity challenges. In the realm of modern digital substations, the integration of IEC 61850 communication networks and systems is a game-changer. 
This integration not only promotes interoperability, but also facilitates the seamless fusion of disparate devices and functions, increasing overall efficiency. However, this digital transformation also brings forth a new set of challenges in the form of cyber threats. These threats can range from sophisticated hacking attempts to malware infiltration, and, if successful, they have the potential to disrupt substation operations. This disruption can not only result in significant downtime, but also compromise the security of the grid, impacting countless consumers and industries. Therefore, the need for robust cybersecurity measures in substations cannot be overstated. As cyber attacks on critical infrastructure become more sophisticated, substations must be fortified with comprehensive defenses. These defenses include not only, re only reactive measures, but also proactive strategies, such as continuous monitoring and functional security assessments. By continuously monitoring critical systems and devices within substations, deviations or anomalies can be swiftly detected and immediate action can be taken to thwart potential cyber threats from escalating. The key to strengthening substation cybersecurity is to foster collaboration between informational technology IT and operational technology OT professionals. While IT professionals are well-versed in the digital realm and network security, OT operators bring in valuable substation-specific domain expertise. Their insight into the intricacies of communication protocols, substation devices, and operational nuances is crucial to contextualizing and addressing the cybersecurity challenges unique to this sector. OT operators can also assist the cybersecurity analysts and threat hunters in handling an incident and supporting their incident response efforts. They can help them understand the impact and severity of an incident on substation operations and security, as well as the potential mitigation and remediation actions. They can also support the correlation and analysis of data from multiple sources, such as sensors, meters, IEDs, RTUs, SCADA, etc. To further facilitate this collaboration between IT and OT teams, organizations are turning to advanced cybersecurity tools, including intrusion detection systems IDS embedded with OT knowledge. These IDSs are designed to monitor substation network traffic in real time, identifying and mitigating unknown or novel attacks that may not fit existing patterns or learned behaviors. They also delve into the functional and logical relationships between substation devices and systems, providing a holistic view of the cybersecurity landscape. In short, the intersection of IT and OT expertise, along with advanced cybersecurity tools, is paramount to protecting electrical substations from evolving cyber threats. As we delve deeper into the dig digital age, securing the backbone of the power grid becomes not only a priority, but a necessity. By embracing collaborative approaches and cutting-edge technologies, we can fortify our electrical substations and, by extension, the reliability and security of our power supply. Cybersecurity in the field of electrical engineering is crucial as modern electrical systems and devices are becoming increasingly interconnected and reliant on digital technologies. Protecting these systems from cyber threats is essential to ensure the reliability, safety, and integrity of electrical infrastructure. Here are some key aspects of cybersecurity in electrical engineering, SCADA and industrial control systems ICS security, supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA systems and industrial control systems ICS are commonly used in electrical infrastructure, such as power generation and distribution. These systems should be protected from cyber threats to prevent unauthorized access, data breaches, and potential sabotage. Implement security measures like network segmentation, access control, and regular vulnerability assessments to secure SCADA and ICS. Secure communication, ensure that communication between electrical devices, sensors, and control systems is encrypted and authenticated to prevent eavesdropping and data manipulation. Use protocols that support encryption and authentication, and update them regularly to address vulnerabilities. Patch management, keep all software and firmware up to date with security patches to protect against known vulnerabilities. Establish a patch management process to systematically apply updates without disrupting critical operations. Access control, implement strong access control mechanisms to limit access to authorized personnel only. Use techniques like role-based access control RBAC to assign permissions based on job roles and responsibi responsibilities. Intrusion detection and prevention, deploy intrusion detection and prevention systems IDPS to monitor network traffic and detect anomalies or potential threats. Configure alerts and automated responses to mitigate threats in real time. Physical security, protect physical access to critical electrical infrastructure, as unauthorized physical access can compromise cybersecurity. Implement measures like surveillance cameras, access control systems, and secure facilities. Security awareness training, train employees and contractors about the importance of cybersecurity and how to recognize and respond to security threats. Promote a security-conscious culture within the organization. Incident Response Plan – Develop and regularly update an incident response plan to mitigate the impact of cybersecurity incidents. Test the plan through simulations and exercises to ensure effectiveness. 
Cyber Risk Assessment – Conduct regular risk assessments to identify vulnerabilities and threats specific to the electrical infrastructure. Prioritize security measures based on the identified risks. Let take example of NERC, USA, compliance and standards, comply with relevant cybersecurity standards and regulations, such as NERC CIP North American Electric Reliability Corporation Critical Infrastructure Protection for the Power Sector. Adhering to these standards can help ensure a minimum level of security for electrical systems. Cybersecurity in electrical engineering is an ongoing process, and it is essential to adapt to, to evolving threats and technologies. Collaborating with cybersecurity experts and staying informed about the latest developments in the field is crucial for maintaining the security of electrical systems. The operating system OS must include the following points. The computer chassis and the door shall be locked with a key to ensure that only authorized persons have physical access to the USB drives. Disable auto-run and auto-play for all USB drives to restrict malware from running automatically. Enforce strong password, minimum of 8 characters including at least one uppercase, one lowercase, one numeric character, and one special character. Password should be unique for each user. Blank, default or dictionary words should not be used as a password. Disable guest account to restrict unwanted access to sign into the Windows OS. Enable security logging so that every successful and unsuccessful event is logged. Logged events can be seen in case any incident happens to provide aid for future remediation efforts. Except for required functionalities in the substation like centralized patch management, hot standby etc., file sharing should be disabled. The OS and application should be updated to the latest security patches at least through the project start date. Antivirus, anti-malware and host intrusion detection HID should be installed to protect systems against any malicious activity and file integrity monitoring if I am. The system should be capable of periodic backups. Built-in firewall should be enabled, all unnecessary privileges should be blocked, and ports should be blocked or disabled. Following are the cybersecurity requirements for SAS network devices, limit remote access from both the user account and network level. Use secure VPN tunnel for remote access. The management network should be separated from the local network. Keep track of devices and applications that are allowed on the network to ensure authorized access. Set up secure configurations of devices to minimize security risks. At the start of the project, the firmware of the devices should be updated to the latest security release. Regularly check for vulnerabilities in the system and proactively fix or block suspicious components to prevent potential security threats. Firewalls must be used from a security point of view and must be properly configured. Firewall rules should be defined carefully. Disable all unused ports. Logging of security events must be enabled to keep track of events on the network. Blank or default passwords must not be used. Password must be unique for each device and each user. Use standard strong passwords, minimum of 8 characters including at least one uppercase, one lowercase, one numeric character, and one special character. Configure encryption and decryption devices modules in both the substation and control center to protect data. Digital substations are integral to modern power systems, utilizing digital communication and automation technologies to enhance operational efficiency. However, their interconnected nature introduces significant cybersecurity risks that must be addressed. Key cybersecurity standards guidelines for digital substations include NERC CIP North American Electric Reliability Corporation Critical Infrastructure Protection, a set of standards designed to secure critical infrastructure in the North American electric grid. Focuses on risk management, incident response, and the protection of critical assets. IEC 62351 addresses the security of communication protocols used in power system operations. IEEE 1686 specifies security capabilities for intelligent electronic devices IEDs. IEC 62443, a series of standards addressing cybersecurity for industrial automation and control systems. Provides a comprehensive framework for securing operational technology environments, including digital substations. NIST SP882, developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, offers guidelines for securing industrial control systems. NSA European Union Agency for Cybersecurity provides guidelines and best practices for securing critical infrastructure across Europe, including digital substations. Promotes a unified approach to cybersecurity across member states. These frameworks collectively aim to enhance the cybersecurity posture of digital substations, providing guidelines for risk management, incident response, and the implementation of security measures to protect critical energy infrastructure from cyber threats.